with the Aaron Rodgers trade finally happening and him being traded to the Jets, I thought I'd give you guys a mock draft now that the Packers are picking at 13 and the Jets are picking at 15. And there's going to be different needs now that Aaron Rodgers is with the Jets. So this will be my first mock draft. And then I'll also be giving you guys a mock draft on Thursday, the day of the draft, with my 100% final predictions for the draft. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we got the Carolina Panthers picking at number one overall after trading with the Bears. And a lot of people were saying that it was going to be C.J. Stroud because Frank Reich didn't like his smaller quarterbacks. He only coached bigger six foot plus quarterbacks and while that may be true I think the Panthers are starting to come to their senses and thinking that Bryce Young is going to be the number one overall pick which I agree with I think he's the best prospect yes he might be short he might be sub six foot sub 200 pounds but he's the best player he's got the most talent and when you're picking number one overall you want to go with the best player available and in my opinion it's Bryce Young so Let's go ahead and take Bryce Young for the Panthers. Now, at number two overall, there's been reports that the Texans are only in love with Bryce Young. And if Bryce Young gets picked by the Panthers, which in this mock draft they did, that they might go with their best non-quarterback available. Um, I don't know how true that is, but I just have a gut feeling that that is true and that they are going to go with a guy like Will Anderson maybe a Jalen Carter or a Tyree Wilson. Um, The number one guy on my big board is Will Anderson. So I think he's the best non-quarterback prospect available for the Texans. So we're going to go ahead and get Will Anderson for the Texans. Now coming in at number three, I think that messes a little bit up with the Cardinals plans because now teams aren't in that much of a rush to trade up because now they have three quarterbacks falling. Um, up until about a week or two ago, the consensus was that both two quarterbacks were going to go with the one and two picks. And now that they're falling, I don't know if a team like the Tennessee Titans or the, the Raiders or the Falcons or even the Colts would want to trade up with the Cardinals just because there's quarterbacks falling. So I think they're, I think they might be forced to stick and pick here at three and they obviously don't need a quarterback. Um, so I think it's down between Jalen Carter and probably a guy like Tyree Wilson. And in my opinion, I think Jalen Carter is a bit better, but with his whole, um, incident that happened January 15th and his bad pro day and stuff like that, I think he's going to fall a little bit in this draft. So I think the Cardinals are probably most likely going to take Tyree Wilson, the edge defender from Texas Tech. So we're going to go in and take him. And now, yes, that is a reach, but reaches happen all the time in drafts. So I think that's going to be a prime reach position for the Cardinals just because I don't think they're going to be able to trade down with anyone. Now at number four, we have the Indianapolis Colts here. Now the Colts need a quarterback. Um, And they have their pick of the three. They have C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, or Anthony Richardson. Now the I've been saying for a long time now that Will Levis just seems like a Colt. He just seems like someone Shane Steichen would like to. And, I mean, I'm not as high on Will Levis, and it seems like a lot of the media isn't high on Levis. But from what I can tell, the NFL is really high on Will Levis. He comes from a pro style offense at Kentucky, while other guys like C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, Will, I mean, um, Anthony Richardson don't. So... I mean, I think the pick here is Will Levis, and I know Colts fans are not going to be happy about that one, but I just think it's the reality. So we're going to go ahead with Will Levis here at four to the Colts, which brings us to the fifth pick, which is the Seattle Seahawks. And now, I'm not sure how much I've heard that they're looking for a quarterback because they signed Geno Smith to, what, a three-year contract, but I'm pretty sure they can get out of that after one year. So they could be looking at a guy like Anthony Richardson or C.J. Stroud, to just sit behind Geno Smith for a year, learn, and then start the following year. But I don't know how realistic that would be. I think the more realistic option would be going um, either like a Devin Witherspoon, a Christian Gonzalez, a Jalen Carter. And I think I'm going to go with a Jalen Carter just because, yes, he's a he's got maturity issues. he got off-the-field issues. But as long as you keep him away from where it happened at, which was Georgia – 
and you take them all the way to Washington and uh, Seattle, and plus you're going under a good franchise with Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll's not going to let any of that weird stuff happen. So I think he's going to be going to a good franchise that can keep him straight because there's nothing else to do in Seattle besides play football. So I think the safest spot for Jalen Carter would be for him to go to Seattle. And so I think Seattle is getting a steal with Jalen Carter at five. Now moving on to number six, the Lions need a cornerback. Um, Sure, they could, like I said, get either Anthony Richardson, C.J. Stroud, but they had Jared Goff. I think they're happy with Jared Goff for right now. And so I think they need to get the best cornerback in the class, which in my opinion is Christian Gonzalez. He's just a more safe pick for the outside. I think Devin Witherspoon can play on the outside, but there's still some questions on that because he is sub six foot. Um, Christian Gonzalez is both good in man coverage and zone coverage, although I think he is a bit better in man coverage. So I think he's just a better fit for Detroit at number six. So we're going to go ahead and draft Christian Gonzalez. Now moving on to the Raiders. The Raiders signed Jimmy Garoppolo in free agency. And although Jimmy Garoppolo isn't the best quarterback, I think he's good enough to get the job done, at least in the Raiders' minds. And so I think the best bet is to just help protect Jimmy Garoppolo and have him have the cleanest pocket as possible. And so why not draft a guy like Peter Skaronsky, who may not be a tackle, may not be able to because of his arm length. But if he can't be a tackle, then he can be a great guard or center. He can really play any position on the offensive line. He's got experience basically everywhere. So if he's not able to play um, on the tackle, then he can just move into guard or center and be a very good prospect there. Either way, you're getting a very good offensive lineman. So we're going to go ahead with Peter Skronsky there. Now moving on to the Atlanta Falcons at number eight. This is a strange spot because I could see them going quarterback here, to be honest with you. I know they have Desmond Ritter, who they haven't even really gave a chance yet. But they drafted him in the third round. They're not that committed to Desmond. Um, so I do think they could draft a quarterback here. Now the question is, do they want Anthony Richardson or C.J. Stroud? I think the better quarterback right now is C.J. Stroud. But if you're having quarterbacks fall to you, why not just try for the home run and get a guy like Anthony Richardson? And he can sit behind Desmond Ritter for like half the season if they really wanted him to. Because I'm not a big believer in Desmond Ritter. So I don't think he's going to play good enough to where... They're, he's going to convince the Falcons that he's their franchise guy. So why not just have Desmond Ritter play for a half a year, three quarters of the way. And then when he starts to struggle, just give Anthony Richardson a shot. And I think he's going to impress and just take um, take the starting job right away from Desmond Ritter. So I just think that's the best option for someone like the Falcons right now. Now moving on to the Bears at number nine. The Bears have had a pretty good offseason, I think. They traded the uh, number one pick to the Panthers. They got DJ Moore, a receiver, which they desperately needed. And now they're sitting here at nine. And so they got Justin Fields a weapon, which he's been needing for a while. So why not get some more protection for him and go with a guy like Paris Johnson, Broderick Jones, Darnell Wright maybe. Um... But I think the best player right now would be Paris Johnson. So I'm going to take Paris Johnson, I think. All right, now at the 10 spot. This is an interesting spot for the Eagles. How Howie Roseman usually takes an offensive lineman or defensive lineman, but they're stacked at both those positions or both those areas. And there's been reports saying that they might trade for Derrick Henry. And while I don't think they should do that, I do think they should at least be open to the idea of drafting B. John Robinson here. He did visit with them, so that's a that's something. But I think what I'm going to do with C.J. Stroud falling the way he is, which there have been reports that could happen, that this could happen, I think I'm going to get a little wild and we're going to trade with the Texans. And the Texans are going to move up from 12 to 10. 
And they're going to trade the 12th pick, the 73rd pick this year from Cleveland. And we'll do a second round pick for the Eagles 10. I'm not sure how realistic that would be, but that's how we're going to do it. And it was accepted. All right, perfect. So now at 10, there's reports that Texans don't like C.J. Stroud at 2, but I think they would like him at 10. So we're going to go with C.J. Stroud here at number 10, and that way they get the best non-quarterback available in Will Anderson and maybe even the best player overall on some people's big boards. Not mine, but there's, he's definitely number one on some people's big boards. And now at 11, we have the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Titans are probably infuriated that the quarterbacks fell, but not quite to them. So now they're going to transition to probably trying to find Ryan Tannehill either some protection with a guy like uh, Broderick Jones, Anton Harrison maybe, or they could look to get him some weapons because Robert, Robert Woods did not work out how they probably thought he would. They have Traylon Burks, who they drafted last year. And he's been solid for him, but I don't think he's going to be the savior for their franchise when it comes to wide receivers. So I think if the Tennessee Titans are sitting here at 11 with no quarterbacks um, available, I think they could possibly go with JSN here. He's my number one wide receiver in the draft, um, and he's probably a lot of NFL teams' number one wide receiver. So, it might be a little too rich for JSN, but that's who I'm going to select here at 11. Give Ryan Tannehill all the weapons he can have. And now at number 12, we have the Eagles, who traded down two spots to number 12. And this is where we're going to take B. John Robinson. They lost Miles Sanders in the uh, in free agency. And they, they signed Rashad Penny, but he's nothing special. Getting a guy like B. John Robinson. The second you draft B. John Robinson, he's a top 10 running back in the NFL, I think at least. Um, and the Eagles, they don't have many holes at all. So I think this is a prime luxury pick position. And why not get, I think, one of the best non-quarterback prospects in the draft. It's just that running backs aren't valued as much as they used to be. So now moving on to number 13, we have the Green Bay Packers, who moved from 15 to 13 because of the Aaron Rodgers trade that happened a day or two ago. And now to start the Jordan Love era, I think they're going to do what they didn't want to do for Aaron Rodgers all those years. And I think they need to get Jordan Love a weapon of some sort. Um, they could get him a tight end. They could get him a receiver. But I don't think any receivers are, are good enough for this 13 spot. So I think we're going to look more towards Michael Mayer or Dalton Kincaid. And now Michael Mayer is a bit higher on my big board. And if you haven't seen my video on my top 50 big board... I posted that video a day or two ago, so you can go ahead and check that out too. But I think Dalton Kincaid is more of the office of weapon. Michael Mayer is more of a supplementary piece. He's He can block, he can receive, he can do all the things. But Dalton Kincaid is more of that offensive weapon that the Packers desperately need. So we're going to go with Dalton Kincaid here at 13. And now at number 14, we have the New England Patriots. And the Patriots, man... Just seeing Devin Witherspoon falling this far, he just seems like a Patriots pick. He's an aggressive corner. Um, he's a great tackler. And I'm trying to think of the Patriots secondary right now. They got Jonathan Jones. Uh, they, they don't have much. They don't have nothing that excites you. And I think Devin Witherspoon can excite you a lot. And he could, he could uh, be the J.C. Jackson replacement because they lost him a few years ago. I'm not saying he is like a J.C. Jackson, but I think he has potential to be on the same tier as a J.C. Jackson. And now at 15, the Jets should probably look to get Aaron Rodgers some protection on that offensive line. Um, they have Mekhi Becton there at tackle, and I'm just not a believer in Becton anymore. Um, he's He's injury prone. He's not that good when he did play. So I think they need to get Aaron Rodgers some protection. And looking at the board now, we have Broderick Jones, we have Anton Harrison, uh, Osiris Torrance, Dewan Jones, Darnell Wright. But I think, I think the best 
tackle prospect would probably be Broderick Jones at this point. And he can slot in at either tackle um, position. But I think they just need to move on from Makai Becton. So we're going to go with Broderick Jones here at 15 to the New York Jets. And now at 16, we have the Washington Commanders. And that secondary is just atrocious. And I think that's the number one position they need to feel they need to fill, whether that's cornerback, slot corner, safety. They really just they need it all. So I think we should just probably take best player available in the secondary. And for me, that's Brian Branch. He can either play the safety role next to Cameron Curl, or he can slide in right there in the slot because they need help at both. And he can kind of move around and be that just that all-around player for him. He can play in the box. He can play in the slot. He can play in safety. He can play everywhere. He's a great tackler for a safety. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take Brian Branch here at 16 to the Commanders. And now at 17, the obvious pick is Joey Porter. I mean, his father played for the Steelers. He's been linked to the Steelers basically all year. That's just the pick that everyone does. And I think it just makes too much sense to not do it here at pick 17. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Now at 18, the Detroit Lions are up, and they picked... Who did they pick? They picked Christian Gonzalez earlier at number six. And so now I think they need to address the offense. And it came out about a week ago that Jamison Williams got suspended for six games. And even if that wasn't the case, I do still think, just seeing uh, Quentin Johnson here at pick 18 still, although he's not my most favorite prospect in the world, I think putting him... Amin Ross St. Brown in the slot and then having Jamison Williams on the opposite side of him is just a deadly combination. And I think even with Jerry Goff, they could possibly be contenders. So we're going to go with Quentin Johnson here at 18. And now at number 19, we have the Bucks. And now the Tom Brady era is over. It's t- they're in a rebuild. They just need best player available, in my opinion. Um... Because they basically they need help everywhere. They need to just rebuild. And so I think I think Lucas Van Ness just seems like a Bucks player. They need help on the edge. They need help on the interior too, really. And I think Lucas Van Ness can play both. I think he can come in and put on a few pounds and fill in that three tech position right away. I mean he's kind of just like a ball of clay that you can mold into anyone you need on that defensive line. So we're going to go with him at pick 19. Now at pick 20, we have the Seattle Seahawks. And this is, they picked Jalen Carter um, prior. Um, And now this is just a difficult pick for me. I think everyone really hates this position. Uh, It could be a trade back spot. But looking, I don't really see anyone that would really want to trade up with them. And you need someone that wants to trade up for you to trade back. So... I think they're just going to have to stick and pick. And looking at the board, it's looking rough. They could go with someone like Jordan Addison. Pair him up, put him in the slot, and have DK and Tyler Lockett on the outside. Because right now in the slot, what do they have? D. Eskridge? He's not the answer. I will tell you that right now. And Jordan Addison, he played in the slot when he was at Pitt. And he won the Blitnikoff. So, I think he can... I think he can play pretty well in the slot if you need him to. So I think that's what we're going to do here at pick 20. Maybe not the most popular pick amongst Seattle Seahawks fans, but, I mean, you got to pick someone. Now moving on to 21, because uh, the Dolphins pick was forfeited. And the Chargers are here, and I want to get them a weapon. But there's no receivers here that I like. Zay Flowers, I think that would be a reach. Although he could fill in that slot. Oh, man. Gerald Everett wasn't as great as they wanted him to be. So Michael Mayer could be an option here. And I think Justin Herbert would probably like Michael Mayer a lot. You know what? Screw it. Let's go Michael Mayer. I think Justin Herbert would be more than happy with another weapon like Michael Mayer in that offense. All right. So now we got pick number 22. And although they did sign Odell Beckham Jr. to a one-year deal, 
it's a one-year deal. It's not a commitment at all. So wide receiver is definitely still in uh, question here. But, again, there's not much here at pick 22. The top three receivers are off the board. The only three that I think are first-round material. And even that, I don't really even think Quentin Johnson's first-round material. But receivers are going to go early. So, I think looking here at 22... We could go best player available, which would be Nolan Smith, probably. And I know they have, uh, what's his name? David Ajabo, who they drafted last year, who was injured all season from Michigan. Um, but you can never have too much depth on the defensive line. And that's what makes someone like the Eagles so good, is that they got so many guys on that defensive line that can just rotate in and rush the, and rush the passer. So I think Nolan Smith is going to be the selection here. I mean, he's dropped far enough. I don't think he's... He's probably not going to drop that far in real life. So, now on to pick 23. We have the Minnesota Vikings. Now, the Vikings just need help on defense. Speaking as a Giants fan, I've seen firsthand in the playoffs that the Vikings defense is not very good at all. So, really, we're just looking at defense here. We could go with a guy like Kalaja Kansi. Miles Murphy would be an interesting pick here. He can play three tech or out on the edge, I think. Um, Deontay Banks for the secondary. But the more I'm thinking about it, I think Miles Murphy's going to be the pick here. Again, he's kind of like Lucas Van Ness. He can play three tech, he can play out farther. Um, I mean, he had a down season last year, but if you just look back at 2021 tape, he is a monster, especially against the run. Miles Murphy is going to be the pick there. Now moving on to 24, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. And let's see. I think this could be a Kalaji Kansi pick. Um, again, Kalaji Kansi is not great against the run. He's a little too small for that. But you got guys like Trayvon Walker and, oh man, what's his name? Fadikoski. Um who's more of a space eater. And so I think they can hide Kalaja Kansi's weaknesses a bit better on that defensive line in Jacksonville. And and Kalaja Kansi's pass, pass rushing upside is just insane. So that would make a deadly defensive line with Josh Allen, Kalaja Kansi, Fadakasi, and Trevon Walker. That is a deadly, deadly defensive line. Now moving on to my favorite team, the New York Football Giants. And it kind of sucks that the receivers went as early as they did. I'm not a fan of having Zay Flowers be the pick here. I see that a lot. And the Giants just have so many slot guys already. And I know most of them are on one-year deals like Paris Campbell, Jameson Crowder, Sterling Shepard. But a lot of people forget that we have Wondell Robinson, who we drafted early in the uh, second round. And he is definitely a slot-only guy. He was injured basically all last season, so he hasn't even really had a chance to uh, prove himself. So I just really don't like the idea of having Zay Flowers be the pick here. I'm also not a fan of having someone like Joe Tipman or John Michael Schmitz here in the first round. I think we can wait till the second round to get that interior or interior offensive line that we need. And our secondary is looking a bit thin. I know we signed Amani Owarie, but... I'm, I don't think that deters you from drafting a guy like Deontay Banks. I really don't. Deontay Banks is a physical press corner, too, that would fit Wink Martindale's defensive scheme, too. I think that makes the most sense. So we're going to go Deontay Banks there. Now moving on to 26, we have the Dallas Cowboys. Now, if somehow B. John Robinson fell this far, I think they would snap him or snag him up in a heartbeat so they, that way they don't have to pay Tony Pollard. But he's he went pretty early. So now we're looking here. And I think they they could use some help on the defensive interior with guys like Mozzie Smith, Brian Brzee. I like Brian Brzee a lot. I think I'm a bit higher on him than most people. I'm definitely higher on him than Mozzie Smith. So I think I'm going to go Brian Brzee. I know people are afraid saying he's he's injury prone, which I just don't think. All his injuries didn't really have anything to do with each other. I think he just got really unlucky when it came to the injury bug. The past, uh, what, I think it was two seasons, yeah, because he tore his ACL and then 
He missed some games with some other stuff that was unrelated to the ACL. Moving on to pick 27, we have the Buffalo Bills. And the Bills, they need... I think they need some defensive interior help. Because they were getting run... Just ran through in the playoffs. But I don't really like anyone here. Mozzie Smith, I don't think he's... That would definitely be a reach in my opinion. We could go with Emmanuel Forbes. Pair him up with Trey White and uh, Kair Elam. I mean, Forbes is a... He's amazing. He's a ball hawk. He had the record for the most pick sixes with, I think... With six in a college career, I think. I mean, he is very light. He's like 170 pounds, which is crazy. But I think gaining weight isn't a skill, which I always like to say. Anyone can gain weight. So, I mean, just put him in the weight room. Put him in an NFL weight room. Have him bulk up 5 to 10 pounds. And I think he's going to be a better corner than most people think. I think a lot of people write him off just because of his size. And they don't look at his skill as much as they should. So... I think that could be one of the steals of the draft, looking back in this in three to five years. Um, now at 28, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. And, I mean, they could use offensive line help for sure. They could also use edge depth. And looking here, the only real guys is Will McDonald and Felix Anudeke Uzama. And I really like Felix. I like Felix a lot. And you can never have too much edge depth. So I think that's going to be the pick here. They could go with someone like Jameer Gibbs with the whole Joe Mixon controversy. controversy. But I just I don't like taking running backs in the first round unless you're named B. John Robinson. So moving on to pick 29, we have the Saints. And the Saints need a lot. Um, so you could go in a multiple different directions. But I think seeing Osiris Torrance here, I really like Osiris Torrance, and I think he's fallen a bit too far. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to take Osiris Torrance here for the Saints. Moving on to the Eagles, their second pick, they took Bijan Robinson um, with pick 12. And now I don't think Howie Roseman can go two picks in the first round without getting a defensive lineman or offensive lineman. And seeing Darnell right here, right tackle, they could look to draft him to be the Lane Johnson replacement after a year or so. And Lane Johnson is also injury prone a bit. So when Lane Johnson eventually gets injured next season, they can just slot in Darnell right there to fill that hole immediately. So I think Darnell race a steal for the Eagles at pick 30. And now at 31, I kind of want to get crazy. I kind of want to get the Tyreek Hill replacement. And I got like Jalen Hyatt. They got uh, they got Kadarius Tony. They got Sky Moore. They lost Juju. So I mean, wide receiver isn't out of the picture for the Chiefs. And I think just seeing Jalen Hyatt and seeing what Tyreek Kill was able to do with Patrick Mahomes, I think the Chiefs would want to get another deep threat speedster like Jalen Hyatt. And I, in my opinion, this would be a reach. But the Chiefs can afford to reach on players that they really like because they are they won the Super Bowl last season. They don't need much. So I think that Jalen High is going to be the pick here. And that's going to do it. Uh, we're going to wait for this to load. Um, so yeah, this is 100% accurate. Trust me, all of these picks are going to be completely correct come tomorrow. So yeah. Let me know if you guys like what your team picked, and make sure you like and subscribe, and as always, thank you.